When you do something, just be yourself. Do it in the right way and people will like it the way it is. Hi, my name is Avram Greenberg and I'm here together with my wife. We are Shluchim of the Rebbe in Pudong, Shanghai for the last 13 years, serving uh, the community and travelers who are coming to Pudong. Shanghai has around 2,000 Jewish people. Some of them live in Pushi, some of them live in Pudong. We are here to serve the people that live and come to travel in Pudong. We serve the local community. There are a bunch of families over here. They come to usually to work here between three to five years. Nobody stays here forever. We have a nice size Hebrew school serving their children, 35 children, which is 95% of the children of the community. We teach them Hebrew. We teach them Jewish holidays, Jewish values, Jewish tradition. We also made it very uh, super kids friendly. So while you're eating Shabbat dinner right there, there is a beautiful gym for you right nearby where your children can play. We built especially a glass wall. So while you're enjoying the Shabbat dinner, you can watch how your kids are playing and they're safe. And you can eat with uh, peace of mind. We have adult education. We have shiurim right here in the Chabad house, shiurim in their offices. Uh, for example, every Wednesday we have a trading club where uh, some of the businessmen come together to enjoy a meal and to learn about the parsha and put on tefillin. Um, there is a Shanghai diamond exchange here in Pudong with a uh, uh, few Israeli offices. So every Monday we have a lunch and learn in the Shanghai diamond exchange and some other shiurim on one-on-one. -on -one. We serve the students, NYU opened a satellite in Shanghai, so there is NYU Shanghai here in Pudong with a nice number of Jewish students and professors. We go there also once a week to do lunch and learn and some other shiurim and activities. And of course we have uh, holiday events and parties and Shabbat services and meals for the community and for the students. Of course, we are here also to serve the travelers who are coming to Pudong. We have Shabbat services, Friday night and Shabbat morning, uh, davenings and meals. We are located in a hotel, in the Ramada Hotel, which is four-star hotel, so it makes it very convenient for people to stay and to pray at the same building. You just go down, you don't bother yourself about if it's rainy or it's too hot, you're just going down and you are coming to Shul. We are also located just 35 minutes away from the Pudong airport, so if you have a flight right after Shabbat, that makes it very convenient. And uh, the fact when we, uh, that we have travelers who are coming to join our services, it makes it so much nicer. And, and it's a nice blend of some community members, some students, and some travelers. It makes it, a nice, uh, makes it a nice environment and a nice blend of people and it just gives a nice picture of all variety of Jews celebrating together and enjoying the Shabbat. Pudom has the Lu Jazz Way, which is the financial district of uh, Shanghai. They have there the tallest building in China. So if you want to see the Manhattan of China, this is the place. They have the three tallest building, which is the Grand Hyatt and two others. I suggest to go to the Grand Hyatt. Um, they have the lobby floor, which is on floor 54, and then you can go higher to floor 87. It's beautiful to see the outside and it's beautiful to see the inside. Then you have the TV Pearl Tower. So first of all, you go again, it's a sightseeing. You see it's, it's very tall and you see Shanghai. And also in the bottom, they have um, the History Museum of Shanghai, which is very interesting if you like history. And then they have the Bund. What is famous in Shanghai, the Bund is the pushy side of the Bund, but Pudong has uh, the Pudong side of the Bund too. And it's very nice to go and see it by day and by night. So many people would like to uh, make a choice to go before sunset, so they see it by day, and then you see it right after at night, they see the lights. When you stand on the pushy side, you see the new buildings on the Pudong side. Which, is, which are the nicer buildings and the nicer lights. Also the pushy side is the historic side of uh, the bun. Since Pudong is brand new, 20 years ago it was just 
fields and uh, it was nothing here. Everything that you see in Pudong is brand new from 20 years ago. We just renovated our shul. What you see over here is brand new. Um, you see a vitrage of four buildings in the shul. This is a, a painting of the four old shuls that used to exist in Shanghai up to 70 years ago, during the time of, the, of World, World War II. So, as you can see here, this is Oil Rachel. Um, that's the first shul that was built here in Shanghai. The next one is Beit Aharon, which was the second shul which was built by the Iraqi community. Then on the other side you see the new synagogue, and near him, uh, the fourth window is Oil Moshe. Two synagogues of these four still, the buildings still exist. Oil Moshe is now, so now serves as a museum. Oil Rachel still exists, it's closed, but the Jewish community gets permission, we get permission to use it around 10 times a year. Uh, when you come for Hanukkah, Purim, and such, we hold services and parties uh, in, the, in Oil Rachel. We started a library of the history of, Jew, of Jewish people in China. Um, we are collecting all the books that were written about the Jewish history in China in all languages. We just started it, time, and with your help, we are hoping to develop it. So when you come over here, you can take, uh, spend your time reading the history of Jewish people in China. Many times when I get calls about people who are coming to China, they are asking me, what am I doing with the dateline? The dateline is a serious issue that you need to find out before you fly. I'll share with you a story that happened to us uh, right after we came to China. We, at the beginning, rented an apartment and we had the uh, event, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then came Sukkot. And in Sukkot, you need to build a Sukkah. So we asked the landlord of our apartment to get for us permission to build a sukkah in the complex. Um, and we explained that it's uh, eight days that we need to eat in a sukkah and that's really needed. She went to the management of the complex, she spoke to them and she came back, she said, you got permission and it's the, in the center of the complex. So the complex is like 20, 30 high buildings, and like in a circle, and in the center they have a restaurant, right in the restaurant, this is where you build your sukkah. So we wanted to do it uh, Chinese friendly, so we built a frame out of metal and instead of putting uh, material or plastic around, we put bamboo. So it's gonna look Chinese. So we have the first day of sukkah, the second day of sukkah, we have guests, we are having uh, the meals, it's exciting, singing, and you know, in the holiday, I don't pick up the phone. Comes the third day, the first day of Chalamoyed, I get a phone call from the landlord. She's asking me, Rabbi, what have you built? I said, I built a sukkah. Now she knows Jewish people from before, so she's asking me, is this the same sukkah that people build all around the world? I said, yes, exactly the same. What's the problem? She tells me, the entire complex is complaining against you. I asked, what is it? We found out that there is a Chinese old custom that when someone is passing away, they keep the dead body in a bamboo hut. So everybody in my complex are convinced that I'm keeping dead bodies in my sukkah. So they call to complain who brings those old customs into modern Shanghai. So she tells me, Rabbi, I'm coming to visit you. I said, sure, no problem. And that's Cholamir. So the first thing in the morning, I go down to the sukkah with the black hat and the black sirtuk, the lulav and the athrag, to go bench the lulav. She meets me on the way to the sukkah. She looks at me from top to bottom and she tells me, yes, they asked me who is the magician that comes to visit the dead bodies twice a day. <laughs> so she tells me, Rabbi, for next year, I think you should find a better solution for your sukkah because that's not gonna work again. I learned from it is that when you do something, just be yourself, do it in the right way and people will like it the way it is.